photosynthesis. If you look out your window, you may see squirrels peacefully gathering nuts or birds flying around searching for seeds and insects. You may even be eating a snack while you're learning. Both you and the animals eat the food to obtain energy. Every living thing needs energy. All cells need energy to carry out their functions, such as making proteins and transporting substances into and out of the cell. Your snack supplies your cells with the energy you need, just as the insects provide the bird with energy. But plants such as grass and trees, along with other organisms such as algae or bacteria, obtain their energy in a different way. These organisms use the energy in sunlight to make their own food. The process by which a cell captures energy in sunlight and uses it to make food is called photosynthesis. Nearly all living things obtain energy either directly or indirectly from the energy of sunlight captured during photosynthesis. The acorn that the squirrel is eating grew on a tree that made its own food during photosynthesis. When the squirrel eats the acorn, it gets energy that has been stored by the tree. The squirrel obtained the sun's energy indirectly from the energy that the tree obtained through photosynthesis. Are you starting to get the connection? Now, organisms that make their own food, such as plants using photosynthesis, are called autotrophs. An organism that cannot make its own food, including the squirrel, the bird, and even you, are called heterotrophs. Many heterotrophs obtain food by eating other organisms. Now, during photosynthesis, autotrophs use the sun's energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into oxy oxygen and sugars, but it is a little bit more complex and it is a two-stage process. Think of it like making a cake, for example. The first stage is to combine the ingredients to make the batter, and then you move on to the second stage, which is to bake that batter. And to get the desired result or the cake, both stages must occur in the correct order. Now, the first stage of photosynthesis involves capturing the energy in sunlight. In plants, this energy capturing process occurs mostly in the leaves. And recall when we talked about cells that the chloroplasts are green organelles inside which have little colored chemicals, chemical compounds I should say, called pigments that absorb light. The main photosynthetic pigment in chloroplasts is chlorophyll. Think of this chlorophyll as solar cells. These solar cells will capture the energy and light and use it to power the next stage. In the next stage of photosynthesis, the cell uses that captured energy to produce sugars. In order to do this, the cell needs two materials for the stage, water and carbon dioxide. Plants get water from the soil and then the water moves up through the plant stem to the leaves. And carbon dioxide is a gas found in the air and enters the leaves through small openings on the underside called stomata. Once in the leaves, the water and carbon dioxide move into the chloroplasts. Inside the chloroplasts, the water and carbon dioxide go through a series of chemical reactions, and these chemical reactions are powered by that energy that we captured in the first stage. This chemical reaction produces chemicals, which are sugars, and recall that sugars are a type of carbohydrate. Cells now can use that energy in the sugar to carry out its important cell functions. The other product of photosynthesis is oxygen, which now exits the leaves through the stomata. In fact, almost all the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere were produced by living things through the process of photosynthesis. Okay, it's time to show what you know.